Hi, neighbors. I am so excited that City Center invited me to join in on the conversation today for this uh, social media takeover. I am Katie Brown, and I am co-founder and principal of Morton Brown Family Wealth, along with my partner, Dennis Morton. Uh, Dennis and I are both certified financial planners, and we focus on investments and financial planning for the families that we serve. We are located in Tower 6, so right downtown with all of you. Um, so everyone is aware, and hello, I see people out there. Everyone is aware that we are living our adjusted lives right now in light of the coronavirus. And you may also be aware that we are in a bear market and that we are headed toward a recession. And essentially what that means is a bear market is when the U.S. stock market um, declines by at least 20%, goes down by at least 20%. A recession is when there's a significant decline in economic activity that lasts at least a few months. So we are experiencing that decline right now. We're not quite a few months into it, but that's the direction that we're headed. And so I thought that for today, um, I'd focus on kind of personal finance 101 and kind of go with back to some of the basics, um, give you a few tips and maybe some insights, and then also talk a little bit about some keys to building your own personal wealth. So just to start with finance 101, and before I dive into the investment piece of it and all of that, um, I want to start with emergency savings, emergency reserves, because that's where I like to start with all of my clients. Um, having emergency funds on, on hand is it's one of the largest stress relievers because it causes stress if you don't feel as if you have that cash that you can access when you need it. And so to have money, whether it's in a savings account or a money market account, but cash on hand, if you have a change in your income or something goes haywire with your car, whatever the case may be, to make sure you can get your money on some hand or get your hands on some money, that's, that's the way to go there. Um, if you don't already have that started, then what I suggest is starting with maybe one month of your living expenses and then kind of building from there. So wanted to touch on that first. Um, now back to kind of basics. So I wanna start with what is a stock and what is a bond? And, and I think that this is really important because it's, it's fundamental and it, it has to do with how you, build your, how you build investments over time. So a stock, a stock, when you buy a stock, you are literally purchasing a piece of a company. And if that company makes money, you make money. If that company loses money, you lose money. A bond is you, you are lending money to a company. And so what, that company will pay you back over time and they're gonna pay you some interest for the right to borrow that money. And it's important to know the difference between the two of them because in a stock, in the case of a stock, you could have, in a market like this, your returns could be spiking up and down pretty deeply. Whereas a bond, you're kind of a little bit capped on the upside and you might have more stability on the downside because if that company goes out of business for some reason, bondholders get paid before stockholders. So there's a little bit more stability. So bonds might go up and down about like this. And it's important to have both pieces of those because they work differently at different times. Which brings me to my next point of diversification. So when you are investing in money, it is important to um, invest in large companies, small companies, U.S. companies, non-U.S. companies, you know, short-term bonds, long-term bonds, government bonds, corporate bonds. You really want kind of a whole mix. Um, I am a fan of retirement date funds within like 401ks, for instance, especially in your early years of savings because it's a really quick, easy way to get exposure to all those things that I just talked about. Um, because we don't know in any given year what's going to make money, what's going to lose money, and it changes all the time. And so as much exposure as you can have to kind of that, that whole you know, cross section, then you're going to reduce your, your volatility over time and set yourself up for financial success later. 
So that's just touching on diversification for a second. Um, and then the other thing along those lines is stick to a, pick a strategy that's comfortable for you. So you have to figure out where your comfort lies based on your goals and, and, and how much you can kind of, you know, how you think about markets like this. Figure out where your comfort lies, stick, find that strategy and stick to it. Don't try to get cute. Don't try to time the market. Study after study tells us that um, that doesn't work. It's, you know, to stay invested, to stay steady, it's, it's actually kind of a, a slow win over time. But um, so, and I know, especially at a time like this, that can feel really tough if you are putting money into your retirement account and you're seeing the value go down as you're putting money in. It's a really kind of sinking feeling. But what's really happening is that you are buying additional shares of the company during that whole time. And so when the tide does turn, now you have a larger base to grow from and you can participate in the recovery at a greater level. So it's actually in your early years of savings, um, periods like this are really beneficial because it gives you that opportunity to buy things at a discount and have a greater base to grow from. So don't shy away from this. I, I would encourage that. Um, the other thing, kind of sticking with retirement plans here for a minute, that I really, really stress is you're probably going to change jobs at some point. You're going to go from one job to another job in your career. And as you do that, I really, really encourage you to keep your money invested. Don't cash out that retirement plan. So you might be able to keep it with your previous employer, you could roll it into an IRA for yourself, or you could maybe roll it to your new plan. But whatever you do, don't cash it out because you will regret that later. So those are my, my big tips kind of around that. Um, now let's talk about budgeting for a minute because I know that it can be difficult. Um, some of you may have, say, uh, a lot of student debt at this time, and, and it's difficult to find that money to invest. Um, Find out, if you do have a retirement plan available to you, make sure to find out what your employer puts into it because oftentimes your employer will match either 3% or 6% or some other percentage. And what that means is if you put in 3% of your income, they will put in an additional 3% um, or 6%, like I said. That is free money to you and you wanna make sure that you get that. And so if you have to give up a little bit of your discretionary spending to make sure you can at least carve out that match portion, make sure you do that. Um, that's, a, that's a really good place to start because you don't want to leave free money out on the table and not take advantage. So that's along those lines. Um, and then it, budgeting in general. Here's my big tip when it comes to budgeting. Well, two things I'm going to touch on. One is be really careful with what you're spending on the big items. So the big items that I would say are house, car, education. You might have something else that falls into that category. It, it falls into another big category, but it's the large commitments that you are committing to paying over an extended period of time. Um, be really careful with the levels that you spend there. If you can keep those at a reasonable amount, then you'll have the freedom for additional savings and be able to make pivots later. If you already have a decent amount of student debt, uh, what I would suggest there is making sure that you are staying on top of your payment option plans. So, um, you know, studentaid.gov does a great job of walking through all the different income repayment plans, some of the loan forgiveness uh, plans that are out there. Make sure that you visit that at least annually because your circumstances are going to change. You're going to make more money. You might be getting married. There might be other things that are impacting um, what plan is best for you and you can change the plans. So stay on top of that. Make sure you have those obligations um, you know, set on a schedule and then do what you can do to carve out additional savings. And for additional savings, I love the idea of paying yourself first before you have you know, discretionary funds available. So set up systematic savings plans, you know, have that money pulled right from your paycheck and put right into your retirement account or maybe another small side investment account to, if, you're, if you're already contributing a lot to the retirement account, for instance. Set up kind of those buckets. Um, and then 
So, the, I mean, those are the big things on the budgeting side. So finally, your keys to building personal wealth. Um, number one, and, and these are all, they're simple, but they're not always easy. So number one, spend less than you make. Uh, I know we talked about that, but if you could even save at least 10% of your income on a year over year basis leading up to retirement, you're probably gonna be in a really good spot for retirement. Um, I've made a lot of recommendations here. I just wanna pause for a second and acknowledge that everybody's financial situation is different and not all of these are going to work for everybody. So please don't take these as you know end all um, recommendations out there. It is important to talk to a professional that kind of knows your situation. Um, so keys to building wealth, spend less than you make, or spend, spend less, yes, than you make. Um, consistently invest. As your income goes up, invest more. So stay in the game, stay invested, don't try to get cute. Um, and then finally, liquidity equals flexibility. And what I mean by that is make sure to have the emergency funds on hand. Make sure that even as you're building investments that you are building, um, that you're aware of how you can access that money at any given time. Because there are gonna be points in your life when you're gonna have opportunities or other reasons to pivot and you wanna make sure you have that flexibility to do that. So those are my big takeaways for today. I hope this was helpful. And I don't, I see a lot of waves. I don't see any specific questions, but if anybody did have anything, feel free to pop it up. And um, I'm thrilled that you joined today. So once again, Katie Brown at Morton Brown Family Wealth, and I wish all the best for health and wellness for you and your families. And I cannot wait to see you um, out and about in the neighborhood soon. Take care.